name's Ford, and I'm going to do a quick little demo walking through the Surat vignette. Um, so if we just want to look up Surat single cell vignette. And then if we click on this one here, this link, I'll kind of just walk through this guided tutorial and add a couple little um, notes here and there of things to, to watch out for. Um, so I'm working from this. You can find the data here. And then if you click on this, this will pull up the R Markdown file. All of this is built on. So I already have those located in the same uh, folder on my computer. So we'll just go ahead and get started. Uh, once we run this code chunk, it's just opened it, or um, loading a couple libraries. And then this is the 10x directory. So this is the filtered genes uh, matrix. And then if you're doing any, getting any 10x data from the university, you'll get a similar file like this. So you can use this on your own and then create Surat. Object is creating our object we're working with with a couple quick filtering steps um, that are super basic and low and we'll do some later uh, filtering as well. So looking at this, if you wanna look at how the data is stored. So this is looking at PBMC data and then looking at three different genes and it's stored in a sparse matrix and it just saves up on um, space. And you can see that in this file below, but each of these dots are a cell with zero counts for that gene. And the sparse matrix is about 24 times smaller um, in size than a regular average makes matrix for this PBMC data. So we're gonna just kind of walk through some of the standard pre-processing workflow. Um, we'll look at a couple different variables to see if we should filter down our cells. One of the first variables we wanna create is this percent MT. So you can either do this with PBMC and then in brackets, percent MT, or it can work similar to this where you just do the dollar sign percent MT. But so it has this night built in function, percent feature set. So we're going to pattern match. And if you remember uh, regex from perhaps one of our previous tutorials, this caret just means that any gene starting with MT dash, we're going to count the feature set for. And if we want to look at our metadata, we can call it with this at dot metadata. And this is what I'll give back. This is the original ident we added. And when we did the create Surat object, it'll give you back end count RNA and end feature RNA. So end feature is the number of unique features of RNA. So the number of unique genes that are being represented. And the end count is the total number of RNA present. And then this percent MT was a new variable we assigned. So next we're gonna look at different ways to filter it. So if we plot our violin plot here, and I, I took out, there was a chunk of code up here um, that I took out just so we could view it better in this area. But this is your violin plot. And what you can do with this violin is you can just add it in a feature. So this can either be a column name from our metadata we looked at, or um, we could look at PBMC features one of these genes they talked about earlier, CD3D. Um, and we can do a violin plot of that as well. And we see that this is count data right now. And that's why it's kind of jumping from one place to another. It's not too bad here, but sometimes I feel like these violin plots get a little covered with, with points. So you can always, if you just really want to look at the violin and not necessarily uh, the points, you can just change point size to zero and then you'll no longer see them here. There's also this feature scatter. So if we run these two and plot them, it'll show us uh, a scatter plot of the end count and percent MT. And we see that there's not really a strong correlation, whereas an end count and end feature, there's a very strong correlation, which isn't surprising. The, the more features and more genes you're expressing, likelihood is that you're um, increasing the number of RNAs present. These can also, I find myself not actually using this feature scatter too much. I'll just use ggplot. Um, and we saw that these were both columns within the metadata. So if you call the metadata like this, um, you'll get kind of a similar plot. Oh, still need to load it. And so there you go. Um, another thing to note is a lot of these plots that are built in Surat functions also act as ggplots. So if you wanted to say add a title, um, let's say this 
you want to use GG title to change the title here, you can go ahead and do that. And so these act as GG plots, and it's easy to kind of change, especially later on if you're looking at um, making the figures nice and pretty. So this is kind of a big step here where they're subsetting the data based on um, these three things. And they don't really talk about it too much here. This is, by the way, just a very clean data set. So it's made to look nice and pretty. And it's kind of easy to figure out where you're potentially uh, cutoffs you'd like to set. One thing I always like to do is look at density plots here. So this is our percent MT. And they're setting their cutoff we'll at a vertical line. Um, so they set it off at five. I'll just change the color so it stands out a little bit more. Change the line type to two, which may make it a dash line. So this is where they're setting the cutoff. So they're saying anything kind of after this is potentially bad cells that they don't want to keep in the study, which makes sense. Um, this data is really clean. Sometimes you'll get a bimodal distribution out here. And so I, I recommend kind of playing with this and really looking at these variables instead of just going with um, what they're saying here. And these, this is a really big step in the data. And I always recommend once you kind of have a good idea of what your data looks like, um, to potentially play around with these to see if you're um, perhaps excluding uh, cells that maybe just have a high end feature RNA. So like more of a stem-like cell may have a higher end feature RNA within your data maybe you're not capturing because of this upper bound. So it's something to look at. Um, and it'll change in every data set. But theirs is pretty clean. So these uh, subsetting works really well for them. There's a couple normalization steps and further steps. Um, one thing to point out is that they will tell you how to access all these different um, data normalization methods. And this is really useful if you're going back to kind of check on things. So this PBMC RNA data is where you can get this normalized data. Um, another big step is this find variable features. And so they'll talk a little bit, and this kind of 2000 number has been published previously, but in some of the newer uh, methods they have, they do have you go up to 3000 features. And what we're saying by variable features is, if you look at this plot here, the standard variance versus average gene expression, each one of these points is a different gene. So the more variance you see in the gene, the likely the higher biological significance you'll get here because it just means it's changing throughout all your different cells to where if there's low variance, even if there's high expression, if there's low variance throughout the cells, essentially just be um, like a housekeeping or a gene that is turned on and everything. So it won't help you in kind of distinguishing what you're looking at later down the line. And so we'll also scale the data and you can find that here as well. And then you can regress on different variables. And then if we run PCA, um, there's just kind of one other thing I wanted to point out. Let's see. Oh, it's still scaling. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out that they kind of just jump through and give a quick example, but it's something you should potentially want to look at. So run this, and then we'll go ahead. Can't find PCA. Oh, forgot to run this one. All right, this should work too. Another major step, we don't have to run those. Oh, we'll plot, we'll just show you where the variance kind of lowers for, these are our PCs on the X and the standard deviation on the Y. And the larger the standard deviation, the more biological significance. So really these here at the end um, aren't as useful and they just set it off at 10, which is kind of a typical PC, but this is something else you can play around with depending on how your PC plot looks. You're really, if you imagine this as an arm, you're trying to find the elbow. And so they say the elbow is kind of at nine or 10. So they go with 10 here. Um, one of the big steps is this fine clustering. And so they talk about different resolutions and here they use 0.5. Uh, I think they say right here, 0 0.4 and 1.2 typically work with a data set like this of around 3000 cells but you should often use higher resolutions. I lean towards higher resolutions right now. That way you get more clusters. And if you end up splitting a cluster that's very similar, you can then just combine them later on, back on later on in your data if you're finding that both of these clusters are the same. We'll go ahead and run the UMAP projection. And 
we'll go ahead and look at how the UMAP looks with their clustering. So this is the UMAP and these were the clusters they used. So it, the clustering doesn't always match up with UMAP projection, but here you see it's pretty clean of like pretty distinct groups with different colors. Um, one other thing I like to do is once you have this UMAP, you can run through different resolutions. So let's say we run uh, from, they said 0 0.4 to 1.2, and we'll go by every 0.1. We will do a different, uh, we'll look through different resolutions. So right here we have fine clusters. This was the code they used up earlier. So we're going to change the resolution. They just use 0.5. We'll circle through 0 0.4 and 1.2. And then we will plot this. And this, by default, will just plot um, the Serac clusters, which will be overwritten in each of these stage. And then, like I said earlier, we'll just add no oh, inside here. We'll just add a title saying. But this will just run through all these different resolutions in this sequence from 0 0.4 to 1.2 by 1. So we're looking at 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, et cetera, all the way up to 1.2. And then we're doing a new clustering. And then we're going to plot it in our, in our UMAP. And so if we look at this, 0.4 looks very similar to 0.5. Let's see if we can make this just a touch smaller so it's easier for it to go through them. So we go up to 0.5, looks very similar, but you'll see in 0.6, very similar, 0 0.7. 0 0.8 changes slightly where this one gets broken up into two. And then we see some shifting in populations within. Um, but really, you can see this data is really clean. Um, and I mean, it's test data for their package, so that makes sense. But when looking at your own data, this might change drastically. And, and it's something useful to look at um, and something to play around with. But that's a quick little introduction to the Surat Beignet. They go through some more steps, and we hope to come out with some more videos talking about cluster naming and some other things. But this should get you started with using the Surat package.